Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jonathan Nicholson with ISP Supplies. Uh, today, we're joined by Hal Bledsoe, who handles business and product development at Tachyon Networks. Uh, he's prepared a thorough overview of their affordable 60 gig point to point and point to multi point fixed wireless solution, uh, their two and a half gig industrial PoE switches, as well as Tachyon's RESTful API device monitoring and management platform. Uh, these devices support the full 60 gig band, are outfitted with easy to aim beamforming antennas. They have uh, multiple gigabit ports and pretty much are a breeze to set up and manage. Uh, with today's bandwidth requirements, a reliable gigabit connection is a must and trenching fiber is an always an immediate possibility. So that's where Tachyon 60 gig wireless comes into play uh, with over two gigs available throughput for up to one kilometer distance without having to pull permits or bury fiber. Uh, we're recording this webinar and we'll share it on social media as well as YouTube. Uh, please submit any questions that you have in the chat window and we will address them after the presentation. And uh, I would like to now hand it over to Hal. Hal, take it away. Thanks, Jonathan. And uh, I'd like to thank ISP Supplies for hosting us today. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone uh, for, for joining to learn about our, our company and our products. So uh, without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll jump in. So who is Tachyon Networks? So for those of you who don't haven't heard about us or don't know that much about us, so Tachyon Networks is, is a relatively new brand. We've been shipping products uh, for a couple of years now. Um, however, we're not a we're not a a, a, a new company. So um, you know we're we're we consist of a, a couple of different companies, um, uh, ones in the US and then ones in in EU and Lithuania. Um, and actually, we've been around since around 2011 in, in this current form. And we're actually um, a, a, the, the, behind a lot of designs that are out there um, that are kind of behind the scenes. Uh, so we, we do all of our manufacturing in Lithuania. Um, we have two full SMT lines. Uh, we do assembly and testing there. We're ISO certified. And uh, last year, we actually shipped uh, close to 700,000 devices in 2022. Those aren't obviously just 60 gigahertz devices, so it's uh, across our wide range of, of products. So as, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, the 60 gigahertz band really is a huge opportunity for, for fixed wireless operators to deploy multi-gigabit connections and, and faster as we go into the future. Um, if, if you think about uh, comparing this to sort of like Wi-Fi standards uh, and, and speeds, we're sort of in the 802.11b days of 60 gigahertz. So there's a huge opportunity for, for what we obviously have today to be able to do multi-gigabit, but to be able to scale that up as we go, go down the road. So it's a, it's a technology on, in, in a space that we operate in that has a huge future. Um, it actually is about 90% of all unlicensed spectrum in the US and worldwide. Um, there are some, some places, uh, a handful of countries which don't have 60 gigahertz opened uh, for outdoor use, but for the most part, 60 gigahertz band um, is, is available pretty much world, worldwide. Um, you don't have to deal with things like DFS, which is the radar avoidance. You don't have to deal with spectrum coordination through AFCs or SAS systems, any of that stuff. Um, it is important to note that 60 gigahertz as a millimeter wave band is affected by rainfall. Um, but, you know, there's ways to mitigate that. Um, it's actually possible to design and deploy networks on pure 60 gigahertz that will never go down in the rain unless it's practically underwater. Um, and it's perfect for where you need mid to high, high density and high bandwidth. If you look at the 60 gigahertz band, it's really, you can think of it as two bands in one. So you have channels one through six in our products on full channel. We also support half channel, but for now we'll just focus on these full channels. Channels one, two, and three are greatly uh, affected by oxygen absorption. Um, we do mostly deploy in places where there's oxygen, so uh, it's something that we have to contend with. Um, when we get into channel four, you're starting to get out of that oxygen absorption range, and then five and six are basically out of that range completely. So what it means is that if you want to do high density, shorter links, um, 60 gig, the, the oxygen basically is a, a, a self-cleaning part of that lower part of the band. So you can reuse those channels over and over a lot. Um, and then basically channels five and six allow you to go a lot longer distances simply because you're out of that oxygen absorption range. So that's gonna behave more like an E-band link. 
Um, we, we do support the full band. Um, there's some other products out on the market that, that aren't able to do those upper channels, especially. So they're really limited to just higher density um, uh, and, and shorter distances. So as, as I mentioned, we do need to consider rain. Um, so if we look at kind of the worldwide map here, um, the, the ITU has uh, developed um, basically what they call rain zones. And these are assigned a letter. And it's something on the, on the order of, you know, for example, if you're in uh, zone K, um, it's, it's like a 99.99% .99 of the time, the rain will not be more intense than 42 millimeters per hour. And so you can kind of use these guidelines. There's 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 guidelines for for four and a half nines, for five nines, uh, four nines, uh, three nines, um, and and you really can design the network to have the kind of uptime that you want. Uh, these are kind of wide uh, swaths uh, or or wide buckets, um, but it's it's still um, a really good gauge to understand what you can handle. And then it's really rain intensity. So if you take a place like Seattle, for example. It rains a lot, but it's not high intensity rain. And it's really the rain intensity that is the consideration when designing links here. So let's jump into our products. So um, the first two radio products that we began shipping um, are called the TNA301 and the, the 302. I've highlighted a handful of key uh, specs here. So we do have uh, two and a half gig ethernet on these. So they support you know, the full 2.3 gigabits per second of real throughput each way. 32 clients are supported per sector. With pure beamforming, we can go a kilometer plus. Um, and then we are, uh, these products are completely beamforming, beam steering products. So we have a wide azimuth and a wide elevation coverage. And then as mentioned at the beginning, we have easy intuitive management uh, options for these as well. Um, so what's the difference between the 301 and the 302? Um, so really, the bit the, they, they look the same on the outside. So the way um, the, the the difference here is going to be in the antenna side. So the, the 301 has a wide azimuth beam scan. So you're going to be able to go you know roughly 120 degrees in azimuth on uh, on all the channels. And then the 302 is going to be a 40 by 40. Um, so 40 degrees on azimuth and 40 to 50 degrees on elevation as well. And this elevation beam steering is is uh, uh, not available in other, uh, many other products on the market in this frequency, um, and it's if you have any sort of elevation change, whether it's a change in elevation of of the land or of the rooftops, or even going from say tower to client, this vertical uh, beam steering is really critical so that you're you stay in in the the, the coverage area of the access point, and so. Um, the default mode for the 301 is AP. The default mode for the 302 is client. These are completely software controlled um, out of the box. They're linked to each other. Um, but if you want to do, for example, 45 degree sectors, you can choose the 302 and get um, 32 customers in a 45 degree sector. So that's appropriate when you need a little bit more distance um, or if you want to have higher density. Um, I'll go through a couple of, of items here, um, but essentially, you know, I, I highlighted the, the key points, but really the, the things that, that set us apart are going to be this 32 clients per sector. There is essentially zero aiming. If As long as you can get it within 40 degrees on the client side, if you're using the 302, then it's going to automatically connect and optimize that, that link. Um, we do have a two and a half gig ethernet port with PoE in, and then we do have a second um, one gig ethernet port with PoE out. Uh, more on that in a second on how we can use that. Um, but obviously you could use it for things like uh, powering up a camera or you know, uh, a Wi-Fi access point or those kinds of options. These are bridge mode um, and they have some, some more advanced features around bridge mode, such as management VLAN support, data VLAN support, DHCP option 82s uh, and, and, and those kinds of options to help with, you know, isolating traffic and making de deployments easier. And we do support full and half channel, although half channel is still in beta uh, support. Um, but we, we do, obviously that's gonna double the number of channels at the cost of about uh, half of the throughput. On our management options for these products, we have obviously a full configuration and management web UI. We do support SNMP as well with private MIB, and then we have a full RESTful API as well, where you can do anything you want with the device um, through the API. So if you want to integrate that into your existing NMS or, or something like that, you're able to. A couple of comments on connection distance. So these are going to be, um, you know, basically no rain distances. 
between a 301 and a 302. This will change um, if you're you know, using a 302 as an access point to a 302 as a client, it'll be a, a little bit further, but this gives you an idea of what that range is. And as I mentioned, it really uh, is two different bands. So you can see the max distance on channels one, two, and three in this scenario is a you know, little shy, 700 plus or minus meters. Um, four kicks that up a little bit higher as you get out of that oxygen absorption range. And then channels five and six are gonna get almost double that distance to about 1.4 kilometers. That's no rain. That's basically as far uh, as, as as you can go with these. And again, there's there's absolutely zero aiming. Um, you just have to get it in the rough di direction. So now when we layer in rain, um, what I've done here is basically prepare a graph that shows um, you know channels five and six, as, as well as channels one, two, and three. So channels five and six are gonna be the red bars and channels um, one, two, and three are gonna be the gray bars. And this kind of shows you for different rain zones in the U.S., for, for example, how far you're able to go. Um, obviously, eastern U.S. and Gulf Coast of the U.S., those are going to get a lot more higher intensity rainfalls. Um, and then when you get out, you know, into western U.S. and, and Canada, you're going to see, you know, zones B, C, D, and E. Those are going pretty far, um, you know, uh, almost uh, 850 meters um, in, in some of those rain zones that are very friendly. Um, and then, of course, that distance drops down to about 400 meters when you get into like the Gulf Coast where there could be hurricanes and those 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 kinds of things. Um, again, this is 301 to 302. Uh, these numbers are going to change if you have a different um, configuration, such as a 302 to a 302, um, as well as, uh, you know, if we have a future model that we'll talk about it in a second, um, that's going to change those those distances as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we handle backup today. So if you want to stretch closer to the max distance without rain, you can basically use uh, the one gig the, the one gig port as a failover option. So what I show here is um, 60 gigahertz as the primary path and using existing infrastructure. So if you already have a tower with five gigahertz or six gigahertz or CBRS deployed, um, you can essentially connect that to the one gig port on the client. Um, and you will set an RSSI target on the client um, and it monitors that. So if you set, I think out of out of the box default, it's set to minus 68 as the RSSI target. If it drops below that, the radio will, will automatically switch the traffic flow to the backup path. That backup path could be to the same tower or depending on how your network is configured, you could even geographically, uh, uh, with geographic diversity is basically back up to a different site on that um, secondary port. Um, we do have another uh, setting on that that's sort of an anti-flat feature. So you set how long it needs to be, once it's back above threshold, how long you want that to be in that steady state before it switches back to the primary path so it's not flapping. Um, in our testing, you'll basically see this uh, this drop, uh, you know, a one ping or less uh, when it does these uh, switches back back and forth. And here's an example of uh, um, uh, a client that is connected. Uh, in, in this case, it was connected to um, a 301. And then we were using some five gigahertz third party vendor uh, as the backup path. And as you can see, when we rebooted the access point, um, it switched over immediately to the um, to the backup path and then switched back once the, the AP had recovered, the client had reconnected, and it was steady for, I think in this case, uh, uh, about 30 seconds was what that was set to. And so this was while streaming HD video, there was no um, impact because uh, obviously video buffers, the, the, the swap over time is less than one second. So it's pretty much unnoticeable to the client. Let's talk about, that was the, the current products that are shipping today, the 301 and the 302. And let's talk about what's coming soon. Um, for those of you who attended the Wisco Palooza show, um, we had these uh, out uh, and, and we're showing this around as well um, in pre-production models. But this is the 303X. So this is a little bit of a different design here, as you can see from the picture. And it's really hard to get a good feel for the size of this, but that radio is, it fits in your hand. It's about five inches square. Um, it is a modular design, so I'll explain a little bit uh, more on that in a second. But this um, this new design, um, when paired with the proper antenna kit, is going to increase those point to multi point distances up to four kilometers today um, with the current uh, antenna kits that are going to be shipping. 
That could be uh, obviously even longer distances in the future with larger antenna kits. And then already in point to point mode with antenna kits, you're gonna be closer to that eight kilometer max distance. Um, these are actually recommended distances. Technically it'll go further, um, but you know we, we try to keep our marketing in check on, on what we're suggesting um, our max distances. Uh, these have the same exact ports as the 301 and the 302. So the same 2.3 gigabits per second. The only difference um, when, when it comes to, to ports is that the 301 and the 302 have a DC input that is accessible. So you can supply DC power directly. These, because of the mechanical design, um, are PoE only, although we did add active PoE as an option on these. So you can supply passive PoE, uh, 38 to 57 volts, or you can supply active PoE from an active PoE switch, um, 802.3 AFAT. Um, and it's the same software, same features, same management. Um, and we've already actually updated the link calculator with these new options in different configurations. Um, and I'll talk more about that on, in just a second. So if we break this down, so when the base unit, the 303X base unit is used, it is a, just like the 301 and the 302, it is a beam steering base unit. So this one is 90 degrees azimuth and 50 degrees uh, vertical. As I mentioned, it's very compact and the same ports, two and a half gigabit PoE in and a one gigabit per second PoE out port. That PoE out port is still passive PoE. So the voltage that comes in is the voltage that goes out. And it does support, again, AP and client modes uh, out of the box. Um, as a bare client, it's going to be the lowest gain option. However, when you meet it, when, when you made it with an antenna kit, uh, those distances are going to increase quite a bit. So the first antenna kits uh, that we're going to be launching are a 100 millimeter antenna kit or roughly. It, it's about the same size as the unit, um, uh, about four to five inches square. And then we'll have an eight inch or a 200 millimeter antenna kit uh, following quickly after. We, we ship the appropriate mount with the antenna kit. So um, the one thing that you are giving up when you add these an antenna kits is the higher the gain of the antenna kit, uh, the less beam steering that you have. So once you get up to the 200 millimeter an antenna kit, uh, the benefits of that beam steering are gonna be pretty minimal and you're gonna need to do more aiming. So when you're doing design considerations for your network, you have a trade off there. You either do shorter distances and no aiming, or you need to do some aiming and be able to go uh, quite a bit further on the distances. We are adding um, kind of unique features. So for example, going back to the eight inch uh, uh, antenna kit, um, it actually ships with a handle that attaches to the back as well. And that handle doubles as an aiming tool. So as you can see in the red circle there, it's sort of like a gun sight where you just uh, align the, the, the front tick into the center of the circle at the target that you want to aim and it will uh, should should be at least close enough to be able to get connected and then you can fine tune with the fine adjustment mount um, in our testing the 100 millimeter kit had still enough beam steering where it was not very difficult to aim so um, you know if you're looking for you know, say a mile or so links on point to multi-point that one's going to be a good fit to be able to do that with uh, a pretty good amount of rain re resilient and and not super painful aiming, let's say. So just to go through, um, we have a lot more combinations now, obviously, as we've introduced the 303X. So you can get an idea of what some of these combinations look like. So on the left there, we have the 303X to the 303X. You know, that's obviously pretty short distance, all beam steering. 303X as an access point um, uh, with the uh, 303X with a 100 millimeter antenna kit, that's bumping you up to a recommended distance of two kilometers max. And then that uh, that product with um, a 200 millimeter antenna kit as a client is going to bump you up to about four kilometers. And then in point to point only, um, when you the, combine the antenna kits on both sides, obviously you've given up that um, that coverage area. But in point to point, you don't need that. And uh, what I've shown here are some point to point distances of six and eight kilometers, depending on the configuration. Obviously, there are more options than this as we have. The 301 and the 302, which can still be an access point and client in these scenarios as well. And actually, if you're using, for example, the 301 or the 302, you're going to get longer distances than what's shown here, simply because the 301, 302 have higher gain antennas. So quick comparison between these. So again, we support AP client and point-to-point -point modes on all of uh, our radio products. 
The beam steering range on the 301 and the 302 are 120 and 45 and 90 degrees on the 303X. You can see what the peak, peak beam gain is there. So the 303X has the lowest peak gain. Uh, number of stations, again, in access point mode is still going to be 32. We still support failover on the one gig port and only the 303X is compatible with um, the antenna kits. A couple of notes there on the powering. So the 301, 302 are passive uh, PoE with and also a DC input option. And the 303X is going to be active 48 volt PoE um, supporting 802.3 AF AT. Um, we do still ship that, of course, with a PoE and injector that is passive and it's still compatible with, with passive as well. So talking about the timeline here a little bit. So the 303X base unit um, will start shipping late this month and into the beginning of November. Uh, and then the antenna kits, uh, the first one's actually going to be the 100 millimeter antenna kit that's on the right there. Um, that one is timed uh, around the same in uh, November. And the eight inch uh, an antenna kit for higher gain is going to be available uh, shortly thereafter. Um, as far as what's next, um, we we can support even larger. So you've seen some other products on the market that have, you know, two foot uh, dishes. That's obviously an, an option with our products too. And it would just be a new antenna kit and it would be compatible with the same base unit. A couple of comparisons uh, against competition here. So um, showing kind of our products against Terragraph uh, and we'll call it the other brand. So. Uh, as you can see, we have best in class number of clients per sector. We support the full band. Um, our clients do have two point uh, two and a half gigabit Ethernet ports, so we're able to do a one way uh, client speed that is that is greater than the 940 megabits per second TCP that you would typically see on a one gig port. So if you want to offer faster plans than one gig, um, you're able to do that with our products. We do support backup through the external one gig port. Uh, we are let's call it backup agnostic today. Um, and then, you know, if you look at this, the total cost to connect 30 subscribers and one square kilometer, uh, we're, we're very competitive on that industry leading, uh, especially in the, in the beam forming areas. I think a lot of people are very familiar with these kind of use cases. So typical use cases for these products that were gonna be multi-gigabit broadband fixed wireless access. And then another very common use case for these are, are gonna be things like video surveillance, and we don't have to worry about, you know, can you get the, the reliable throughput to supply multiple 4K cameras in an installation? Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, customers that are doing video surveillance that are switching from 5 gigahertz into 60 gigahertz for that reason. We have on our website a full suite of link calculators. Um, so there's... There's some specific link calculators that you can see on the right there that has, um, you can choose the, the tachyon model, um, access point and station. It supports um, scenarios that are point to multipoint as well as point to point. This is a line of sight technology. So we, you know, we don't do a lot of modeling or, or around you know, obstructions, but this will tell you essentially you know, based on the channel and the distance, um, you know, is the link possible? What's the, the signal budget? We also include uh, some notes around, you know, at the at the lowest modulation, you know, what's the what's the most amount of rainfall that the link can handle uh, before it's going to drop off com completely. So we provide that information as well. Um, we also provide some general uh, calculators that you can use with our products or with other other products. So, for example, if you want to convert between rain rate and what that is in attenuation of the link in dB per kilometer, we have a calculator for that. You can see there, you know, 25 millimeters per hour is about 10 dB per kilometer of attenuation on, on, on the link. And then we have going sort of the other way where if you provide a link budget, so let's say you have a radio that's has a received sensitivity of minus 70, it's connected at minus 60, so that's about a 10 dB of link budget, and the distance was 300 meters, uh, it'll tell you what the maximum amount of rain that that one can handle. If you're using our products, that's built into our calculator, but um, we wanted to be helpful if you're using other products as well to see what, what they can handle. So a little bit of a note again on rain intensity. So again, it is the intensity uh, that matters the most here. It's, it's not how often it rains. So um, you can actually go between, to, to better understand this and to visualize it, uh, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with weather radars. Weather radars are using uh, colors to show the intensity of rainfall. Um, and so what we've done is that's typically expressed in what they call DBZ. 
Um, and what we've done here is 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 kind of shown a chart that, that that shows what is that in actual rain rate. So if your if your radio is able to handle a a, a rain rate in that last example of of uh, 20 millimeters per hour. Um, you can see that that's going to be basically yellow to orange across the entire path is what that's going to be able to handle before it, it drops out. So this is a good way to understand, you know, what what is, you know, if there's a, a lot of green on the radar or versus yellow versus red or purple, um, hopefully we haven't seen a lot of purple, but you get an idea of what that actually translates to into millimeters per hour and what that means for your CC gigahertz links. Okay, let's talk a little bit now, change gears and talk about switches. So um, we initially launched the 301 and the 302. Those had two and a half gigabit uh, ethernet ports. And then we quickly found that unfortunately there's not a lot of good options for two and a half gigabit uh, switches to be able to connect those two. Um, so we um, decided to develop and release a switch. Um, this particular switch is a six port switch. It is a DIN rail mountable. We include the DIN rail mounting kit in the box. Um, it is passive PoE. So if you look kind of from left to right there, those four ports in the middle are going to be a PoE out. Um, and those are passive PoE out software controlled. This product is VLAN aware and it has the same uh, easy intuitive management that we have on our other products. So if we dive into the details a little bit on this. So it's a industrial temperature rated six port switch. Um, there's two ways to power the switch. One way is going to be through ETH0 PoEN. That's going to handle a maximum uh, current of one amp. So if you if the total power budget that you need on PoE out uh, is is less than or equal to, um, you know, let's say 48 volts, one amp, if you're putting 48 volts in, then you can power it through PoE. If you need more power, then you'll need to power it through the, the DC jack that you see there on the left. Has the same voltage input range, um, but it supports a total of four amps uh, maximum input, and so you can actually put the the maximum power out. We can supply uh, 0.8 amps on each PoE out port, um, so that powers quite a number of devices on the market besides our products. Um, there are some products that need more power than call it, you know, 38 to 40 watts, and for those, um, we're not able to power those uh, with with the switch. Um, we do have a 10 gig SFP plus port um, that's going to allow you to put either one gig or 10 gig SFP pluses in there. We have uh, tested and used a number of vendors, uh, uh, fiber and copper modules there without issues. Um, the one thing just to be aware of is that those SFP plus modules can get extremely warm and will reduce the operating range of the switch. Um, we are working on um, some improvements on the thermal loading to be able to handle hotter SFP plus uh, uh, products, but there are some products on the market that are extremely power hungry and generate a lot of heat and it's difficult to kind of deal with those. So just something to be aware of. Um, most mainstream fiber uh, and, and copper modules uh, don't, don't have a, a problem. Um, and again, the same web, SNMP and RESTful API management on the switch. So a couple of usage examples now on you know how uh, the the switch can be used. So in this example, we we show we're using a 48 volt one amp PoE um, powering the switch as well as two TNA 300 series products on the PoE out. Um, you potentially can connect up to three. Uh, two is safe. Three is marginal, depending on what the line run distance is between the PoE injector and the switch. Um, if you want to power four of our products. Uh, for example, then um, uh, you need to switch over to the 48 volt, four amp. Uh, doesn't have to be four amps, but it could be up to four amps. So you, you power it with that 48 volt uh, DC power. We do include an adapter in the box that converts from that barrel jack that you see there to screw terminal. And then you're able to power four products off of those uh, two and a half gig ports uh, without any, any issues and still software controllable per port um, uh, PoE control on PoE out. So talking about the roadmap. So um, as, as you know, the, the TNS 100 started shipping in Q2. Um, we're releasing uh, the 303X towards the end of Q3. So slightly delayed from what was here, that should probably be updated. And um, as far as what's coming next, so we, we have uh, other products planned um, on both the, the TNA series and on the switch side. 
So a lot of feedback that we got, um, you know, there's there's a, a kind of a split with the number of people that want to use existing infrastructure for backup, as well as people who want to use, um, you know, integrated backup. So integrating five gigahertz or six gigahertz uh, is a priority for us as, as an, another option for people who don't have existing um, uh, sub seven gigahertz infrastructure that they can use for a backup path. So that's on the roadmap. Um, those would be compatible with the same antenna kits that we um, have for the, the 303X. And then uh, the other request that we've gotten a lot is for higher port count switches. So that is um, something that we're working on as well. And I uh, hope to have some announcements out here uh, this quarter um, very soon. And so that's, uh, that's the high level overview uh, of the TACAM products. And I'll turn it back over to Jonathan. Excellent. For questions Thank you, Hal. Comments. Yes, sir. We do have a, a couple of questions that came in to review, and we have a little time left, so we should be able to cover them. Uh, the first one will is, will Tachyon Networks have a model in the future that has a five gig backup built in? Great question. So, yep. So we are um, we're planning to work on an, a, a, or we're actually already working on um, a, a model that has that five gigahertz, maybe some other band uh, integrated in, um, and that would uh, you know, basically be a complement to our our current products and with the one gig port being the backup system. So once that's released, um, we would be covering all the bases where if you want to use um, existing infrastructure for backup, we would have products for that. If you want to have built in backup um, sub sub seven gigahertz, we would have support for that as well. Excellent. Looking forward to uh, hearing more about that in the future. Uh, another question that came in is, can I use my existing five gig setup for failover? Yep. So uh, as I was talking about there, um, as, essentially, you know, we have customers that are already doing this um, with you know existing U ubiquity products, um, the CBRS products. Um, the other advantage to this is potentially um, it can meet the requirement. So if you use, for example, um, uh, a, a 365 or a, a CBRS radio as the backup path, it may allow you to qualify for some government funding that's that's only available when you're using quote unquote licensed products. So you would still be able to get the benefits of multi gigabit speeds, um, but maybe also be able to get the benefits of uh, government assistance on the funding side. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're looking at when we have the option to be able to use any third party radio. Frankly, the backup could be also a 5G fixed wireless product or LTE product. Very nice. All right. Uh, next one. I'm Currently using 24 volt clients mostly. How can I power those with the uh, Tachyon client since it is 48 volts? Good question. So um, we don't have a product for that. However, a lot of our customers are using essentially, um, you know, instant uh, 3AF adapter. I think uh, Ubiquity has that product indoor and outdoor that converts 48 volts. Um, that, that works fine to convert 48 volt passive as well to 24 volts. We're actually using that product in our lab to to, to power things like uh, nanostation locos, nanostations, those those kinds of things that only support 24 volts. I think there's a, a couple of other brands uh, of that kind of a product on the market as well. Um, so those those seem to work very well to to be able to handle that 48 volt uh, PoE out and convert that to 24 two pair that those products awesome. like. Thank you. Yeah, very very useful having that second port there. Um, last yeah. question here is when will the 303X be available? So we are um, getting our first, uh, well, our, our real mechanical units are, are coming in. Um, uh, they're shipping out actually tomorrow to our factory to be assembled into finished products. So we expect to have those shipping out um, towards the end of this month, the beginning of November. Uh, and then obviously we'll be ramping up uh, supply to the channel in the month of November to make sure that we have uh, good good coverage there. And that'll uh, line uh, in November with also the release of the 100 millimeter an antenna kit. And late November, I think, is when we'll get the 200 millimeter an antenna kit shipping out as well. Good deal. Thank you very much. How much appreciated. And uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. So if anyone has any additional questions or would like a quote for some Tachyon gear, uh, please shoot us an email at sales at ispsupplies.com or you can give us a call at 855 WISP Pro. That's 855-947-7776. Um, if you have a project to design, let us know. We have complimentary design assistance for our customers. Uh, we also provide pre and post sales support, and it's all in-house as well. So let us know how we can assist. 
And uh, we will be uh, uploading this webinar to our YouTube channel uh, at youtube.com backslash ISP supplies and also sharing it on social media as well. So please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media to uh, be able to go ahead and watch this webinar once again in case you missed any parts or in case you didn't make it today. So thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. And a special thank you to Hal and the rest of the team over at Tachyon Networks for putting this uh, product and product presentation together. So I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Until next time. Thanks, everyone.